I am so excited to see you directing. This Thank makes me you. so happy. Can you please tell me about making that decision and what it was like? Well, it's something I've been working towards for a few years. I was directing small things here and there when I could fit them into my busy acting schedule. And, you know, it's a lot to take the time to do a feature. And really, I think, as with all things in Hollywood, the stars just sort of aligned for this one, you know. Um, when it looked like Jason's other movie was going to come together, uh, and we made a list of who else could direct the movie. Everyone just said, the list is stupid. You should just do it. <laughs> so exciting. Now, how did you find it doing doing this movie as the director? And I loved it. I mean, I think it's sort of, um, I look back on it probably more fondly than I felt every day working on it, but I definitely, um, now that I'm on the other side of it, I'm really excited um, that, I, that I took it on, and I really did enjoy it. I loved working with the crew, especially. I mean, just collaborating with them on a daily basis. You know, I've obviously worked with actors my whole career, but and I'm, I love actors, and I'm so in love with all the actors in this film. But it was, it was the, the crew all working towards the vision that really impressed me the most. I had so much fun with everyone. Now tell me, how are the stakes even higher this time for the Bellas and where we find them? Well, you know, the first film, um, in the first film, the Barton Bellas are, they're sort of big fish in a small pond. You know, the whole setting is sort of on the college campus, it's boys against the girls, and it feels, it feels young and bright and fresh and everything that it's supposed to feel. But I really wanted the second movie, because the women are now graduating, older, looking at life after the Bellas, looking at the big world. I wanted the movie to be the big world. So I wanted the pond to be an ocean. <laughs> and I wanted them to be guppies again with, with sharks swimming around them. Um, and that's really, you know, that was my main goal. I wanted to feel like everything was bigger, that they were meeting a lot of adults. You know, all the new cameos in this film are bona fide grown-ups. Um, you know, the, the riff-off from the first film, which was in the pool at night with the other collegiate groups, very sweet and cool. Um, this one is like a fight club, you know, an underground, dark, uh, s much scarier um, event with like real grown-ups, you know, as their competitors. So I wanted, I wanted to be constantly on theme of these are women who are graduating from Barden Bellas to Bellas for Life, and they're, you know, that that we were telling a story in that transitional time when you go from being a big fish, a senior on your college campus, to having to start over again. All about growing up. <laughs> you gotta grow up. You know, it's all about, everybody's gotta start over all the time. <laughs> you know? No, don't make Constantly me. starting over. Um, what sort of are your favorite performances or songs in this, and why? I mean, I handpicked everything, so <laughs> they're all my, they're all my favorite. I really couldn't pick. I, I had a lot of fun shooting DSM, I mean, you know, that group, it's kind of not fair because we cast a lot of that group with professional dancers. And so they, they are just, they're completely amazing as a, you know, as a unit. Um, I think the choreography that they do is really incredible. Um, but it wasn't quite fair. We, you know, we, I did want them, you know, we had to make the Barden Bellas underdogs and the best way to do that was to create a group that was even better. They're pretty insane, those, those dancers. <laughs> and I love who you cast. I mean, Flula. And <laughs> yeah. Tell me about all your new, uh, your new people. All the new people. Well, in the original, in the script, Flula's role was actually written for a woman. Um, and it was sort of like a doppelganger of Fat Amy, actually, a German Fat Amy. And I felt like Fat Amy didn't need any competition in the movie. Um, and I also felt like one of the ways that she works really well is with like interesting sexual tension. <laughs> and I wanted to, to um, give her a boy to play off of. And frankly, Flula just came in and he's so interesting and original. And I feel like our movie is so original and unique that I just wanted to populate it with really unique performers. David Cross is one of them, Reggie Watts, you know, Fitz, who's this incredible beatboxer, just trying to populate the world with as many of those super unique individuals as possible. It just gives so much texture to a movie. And Flula brought that in spades. He just walked into the room. He was completely not right for the what was written on the page, so we just threw out the page and said, let's just write it for Flula. Yeah, and then you've got Haley, and, and like you said, all these amazing cameos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Haley, that was a long time in the making because we, we read probably, we probably saw 100 girls. 
And when Haley, she was making a movie while we were casting. So she was sort of unavailable, you know, to even think about being in this film. And then finally, as she was wrapping up that movie, she sort of raised her hand and said, I might want, like to do that. <laughs> and I was like, yay, I love that girl. <laughs> Let's see. And then, you know, she's such an incredible singer. And she's just got so much charm. And she brought that exact feeling of, like, the little sister that I wanted. And, you know, she's, she's meant to be sort of the next generation, the little sister. And you really, f you feel that dynamic when she, she's 17, you know, it was really amazing. What was important to you with like the music, picking the mashups, the arrangements? Like yeah. Just to, I didn't want to tarnish the legacy of the first film. That was my biggest concern with the entire movie, but especially with the music. I think Jason Moore did such an incredible job putting the music together on the first film. And, you know, we wanted, I wanted there to be really specific sound differences between the Bellas and, and DSM, Das Sound Machine, their, their rivals. So, I, I, you know, really um, picking music for Das Sound Machine that had, a, that had a rock edge in it, that had some sort of electronica in it. You know, I feel like some people don't even realize that the Tsunami song is mashed into the original song, but, you know, there's so much going on musically in that song. It's a huge accomplishment to put that stuff together and arrange it all a cappella and to make all of those sounds with your mouth. It's incredible. Every sound is made by a human being. Most people don't believe us, but it's true. Why should people go and see this film, do you think? Like, or why do you like this film so much? I think this film resonates with people because of the teamwork, the sense of teamwork and camaraderie that comes with bringing a group of people together, um, in this case, a bunch of misfits, <laughs> and accomplishing a goal. I think if you've ever been on a team, you understand that dynamic. And then it's just wickedly funny. You know, I think it's very surprising, the humor in it, and very joyful. There is nothing mean-spirited in this movie. There's a, a true sense of people doing something that they love. Well, can I ask one more about, okay, just, most outrageous line you got to say or you enjoyed seeing someone say? Um, well, Gail and John definitely said the most outrageous things, and most of them are on the cutting room floor. <laughs> but they'll be on the DVD extras. Uh, we put together a whole line of Rama for the DVD extras. And you can't tell me one of the lines? They are not uh, probably appropriate for the rating of whatever we're doing right now. It's they terrible. involve large body parts, male anatomy. Mostly. A bit of that.